Hey you guys, it's Benefits of a G from G Tracker here. And today's video isn't really going to be much about how to flip in general, but rather to talk about the different types of merchants out there in game. And I've categorized it into three groups, um, but obviously any one of these groups can uh, mingle between any of the different categories out there. Um, but the three groups that I've categorized would be your beginner type merchants, your average merchants, and your masterminds out there. Um, and again, this isn't meant to categorize anyone specifically into a category. Obviously, you can share some traits between beginner to mastermind and anything in between. Uh, but this is rather to help you guys visualize and um, understand how to how other merchants are thinking in game and how you could possibly advance yourself on trying to give yourself more of an edge um, continuously over time to better yourself as a merchant in the long run. So first off the list, we have our beginner type merchants out there. And these guys generally have little to no experience whatsoever flipping. They may have watched some YouTube videos out there and they're gonna try and replicate the items that the merchants have tried flipping in their videos. But generally, these guys have little to no experience and they're gonna have no clue whatsoever on where to start and what items to flip. So the most common phrases you'll hear these guys say would be, what items are good to flip right now? This is bullshit, nothing is buying or selling. I don't flip anymore, I can't make any money. And my all-time favorite, what the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, that? That's something that you'll probably hear from time to time when you're walking around with some kind of cosmetic item and they'll probably come up to you and ask you what item that is. These guys generally don't have any clue whatsoever on what to do in game in terms of flipping. Uh, they might ask around on what to flip they're not really experimenting themselves and trying to get you know their own experience on what is working for them and what they would be comfortable flipping in terms of how much they should invest and what they would be comfortable losing in the long run. And the most common traits that these guys have would be that they're either brand new to the game or they're brand new to flipping as a whole. Uh, this is gonna go hand in hand with how unaware they are of how volatile the market can be so if they try making an offer in one day and it's and it starts tanking the next day, this might discourage them a little bit. So they are going to have the highest rate of quitting this type of uh, money making in game. So it does kind of play with a little bit of psychology here. If someone was brand new to flipping and they've watched some YouTube videos and they tried their hand at it in game and they had some success and they made some money off of it then that's going to be kind of like a little bit of an incentive for them to continue flipping as they had some success on day one. And if they do face any losses in the future, then they can go back to their first day thinking that, you know, they did make a profit off of this at one point in time, and maybe they're making a mistake at that current point in time when they did lose money. Whereas if someone were to flip at the very beginning, um, after they've watched some YouTube videos to get them give themselves a foundation, and they lost money immediately, or they didn't make as much money as they had hoped, then that's gonna be kind of like a deterrent from them from flipping as a whole, and they may not flip ever again. Um, but those who do stay, these guys are 100% not paying attention to the updates or the uh, Twitch stream Q and A's. That's not to say that they're not watching the Q and A's or reading the updates. Uh, they certainly can participate in that, but they're probably not giving a second thought in terms of how that's going to affect the market in game. They're probably just going to go about their ways, um, you know, just kind of doing whatever they're doing previously in game and not really take any notice of that. And of course, if a beginner were to use a tool like GE Tracker, then they're probably not doing any kind of thought process as to what the information is showing them in terms of like where the price really is valued at in the long run, whether or not a mass hype is inflating the price or a mass panic is devaluing the price of an item. They're not really thinking too much in terms of where the item should be really valued at. And they're taking the information that they're shown at face value without digging a little bit. <laughs> and I'm sorry guys if this puts some of you guys into this category. But hopefully that lights a little bit of fire underneath you guys to try and get you guys out of this little box that you guys are putting yourselves in, which is definitely set up setting yourselves up to fail. 
uh, because you're not you're not digging into um, you're not digging in at, at all in terms of where these items should really be at. So if you're looking at the current price, offer price, sell price, and approximate profit, and you're only basing it off of that, then you're you're only setting yourself up to lose money in the long run. It's not a win-win situation. Um, you're basically trying to have the information fed to you on a silver platter and just kind of go in game with little to no effort and try and make a profit, which of course it could happen. You could certainly make some money by doing this, but in the long run, you are 100% going to lose money just solely doing this. Um, <laughs> I have a little graph here showing um, if somewhere, someone were to you know make an investment and they did make a profit in the beginning, but then in the long run, it's just going to kind of go down and eventually they're just going to lose money. So if, if you're in this category, guys, if some of you guys are doing this, please stop. <laughs> please stop. Please actually, you know, click on the item and, you know, take more information in and see where the item really stands. You know, is the item skyrocketing? Is it hitting its cap from its current history? Is it hitting its current bottom? Or is it, you know, kind of continuously going on a decline? Um, a good example of a de uh, an item that's declining would be the Armadillo God Sword, which has been declining for a very long, long time now. Um, so if you're in this box, please stop. <laughs> please do some more research and not base all of your flips solely on this little bit of information that is literally just a snapshot of the past few minutes. Do some research so you don't make those mistakes. And then you have your average type merchant out there who have made anywhere from 1 million to 500 million GP. And that's on old school, not RS3. That's a completely different market. Uh, but as you can see here in the screenshot, I've posted some of the more commonly flipped items by this category. So you have your PBM and PVP gear and maybe a few cosmetic items. So if you were to watch any YouTube flipping video out there, these are generally the type of type of items that these guys are going to be flipping. Uh, that's not to say that's a bad thing. I would say 99% of the player base of all merchants out there fit into this category. So it does make sense that these videos would flip these types of items. Uh, but these are generally, this is generally the category of items that these guys would flip. And these guys are generally more comfortable with losing money. They're generally going to be more prone to accepting losses and getting back on their feet and continuing on. They may do a little bit of research, maybe a, bit, a little bit of planning. Um, so they're kind of moving away from that beginner stage where they have no clue of what they're doing and they're trying to you know, experiment with the market and try and learn as much as they can. And your average merchant out there may or may not start paying attention to the Twitch streams or the updates that have been implemented in game. And what I mean by that is by trying to see and figure out how these updates or the Twitch streams will impact the market in the long run. And I would say about this is kind of like 50-50 on whether or not this category, you know, tries to pay attention to that. Um, but like I talked about in the previous screenshot, their flips are pretty predictable. Um, they're going to be flipping the more common type items, just like everybody else. And they may or may not use tools like GE Tracker. But like I talked about in the beginner category, just because you're using a tool like GE Tracker doesn't mean that it's just going to be your gold ticket to the profit zone. You're always going to have to do some research on your own. So those of you guys that are in this category, always do research, always look at as much information as you possibly can, which definitely includes the price graphs, their history, and of course, paying attention to updates and Twitch streams. And like I said earlier, these guys are generally more comfortable with losing money. And if they do lose money, then they're going to probably continue flipping without any hesitation. Now, the biggest downside to the average merchant out there is that they are part of the mass herd. So what I mean by that is they'll generally they're they're basically generally jumping on the bandwagon when an item begins to show that it is going to rise significantly or they panic sell when an item starts declining 
pretty quickly. And they're not going to try and make those long-term predictions um, based off of the information that is available to them. So um, if an item starts rising, they'll probably try and jump on that as it's rising and try and make a little bit of a profit as opposed to trying to make the prediction before it happens. So if you are part of the mass herd, part of the average merchant out there, you can't always predict the items increasing in price. It's, it's impossible. It's not always going to happen. But you should try and learn as much as you can about updates, what the mods have to say, and try and make those predictions yourself. And your average merchants out there are going to be more inclined to look at the information and dig a little bit deeper like I talked about earlier. So if they were using a site like GE Tracker, then they're more than likely going to start looking at the pricing graphs and trying to determine whether or not, based on the fluctuations shown on the screenshot here, if they could make a profit off of that item. Um, as you can clearly see in the screenshot though, at that current point in time, the item was hitting a new low. So someone who was comfortable with doing a little bit of research, they might try and look at a longer time frame to determine whether or not this item has hit his cap and is going to go on a decline rather soon, which is kind of going on a decline right now, or whether or not this is a new low and whether or not that's going to increase based off whether or not there is an update in game or an update that is planned that would make this item continuously decline or the absence of an update, which would mean that this item may possibly increase again in the future. So the average players out there or the average merchants who are on the higher end of this category would certainly look at this type of information and try and make those predictions. And this could certainly play off in any time frame. They could certainly try and make an investment during the day and flip it within a couple of hours or try and flip it in a span of a week. It really all determines on whether or not what you are most comfortable with. And then I've included a little um, profit graph here at, on the bottom. And I've included this for you know a very specific reason in that this user is very comfortable with making decent sized amounts of profits um, with little chunks here and there. But as you can clearly tell, within a span of a few months, they're almost nearing at 60 million total profit. So this would be someone who is definitely on the higher end of the average merchanting skill. And of course, uh, no one starts out with 2 billion or 600 million. So this could easily be someone who would fit in the mastermind category and they are just starting out. Um, but this is certainly a graph in which you guys want to aim for. So, and finally, we have our masterminds. And these are generally players who have made 600 million to more than 2 billion. And of course, obviously, if someone were to start out and they share some of these traits and they've only made 10 million, then obviously they're still a mastermind. And someone who has made 600 million to 2 billion but don't share some of these traits could obviously be an average merchant. These are just some of the traits that these guys generally hold overall. And I have a little screenshot here of basically some of the more comfortable flips that they would invest in, which would include spirit shields, third age uh, items, brand new items that are released into the games like Dragon Claws, um, Abyssal Bludgeon, and the Dragon Warhammer. So these guys are generally much more comfortable with risk and are much better at diversifying their investments. And onto the more common traits that these guys hold would be that they are very likely to hold more than one flipping account. I would say 99% of these guys have more than one merchant account and um, for obvious reasons. And they are definitely long-term planners and are exceptionally patient. They are marvelous at diversifying their investments and they pay excessive attention to Q&As. So what I mean by paying attention to Q&As, I mean these guys are literally noting down anything that they find useful and they'll hold on to that for a very long time. And they'll definitely keep a record of information they find useful. So basically anything else in game, maybe something that was talked about on Reddit, uh, these guys will keep note of virtually everything. And not always, but they can be market manipulators, which has, of course, given merchants a bad name. And these guys are definitely the, the players that could influence the market in a negative fashion. And I do have one example 
of an item that was manipulated, um, I believe about a year ago, but it wasn't manipulated in a sense that it affected the entire community. It was really just a small group of people who actually could afford this item. And like I said earlier, guys, these guys will definitely pay attention to Q&As. And no matter how long it's been, they will keep note and tabs of every single Q&A that they find useful, including time periods within that video itself. And they may or may, or may not make investments based on those Q&As. And if they don't see an item becoming valuable over time in which they would hope to flip the item back, they may try and social engineer by making Reddit post on 2007 Scape by trying to convince the mods and the community that these items need a buff and that the mods said so in a previous stream. Um, usually trying to use the mods themselves who have also referenced this as something that needs a buff generally gives, gives the community um, a further incentive to further support that post which could potentially create a little hype of the item artificially inflating it in which that merchant would have made some money off that just by having the community back him up, um, him or her. So these guys are definitely long-term planners and just like market manipulation, they can also um, include some social engineering, which of course includes trying to post on 2007 Scape Reddit. <laughs> and I have a little, I have a little screenshot here for you guys, um, which kind of gives you an idea of the type of merchants there are in game. I mean, the the mastermind percent out of the three categories, I would say, take up less than one percent of all merchants. And these guys are extremely wealthy. And as as a fun little hobby for them, they could, of course, have a massive collection of a variety of items in which it's simply just fun for them. And they have no intention whatsoever of selling these off. Um, but this does kind of give you an idea of items of what it would look like if they were to try and make an investment on an item in the long run and hope that these items kind of skyrocket in the future. In which, of course, um, if you guys know, just by a little logic, if an item were to suddenly increase in price, these guys would certainly dump their items off. And depending upon of how much of a demand there is, they may or may not um, kind of level that price off to a more medium price or just kind of create uh, kind of like crash the price altogether so if an item skyrockets um, and they kind of dump these items off and there's really no demand for it then the item is just going to kind of plummet again to its original price and then some of these items are just kind of like fun collections like the lava ruins bando's page and the bronze items um, of course i don't assume that these guys are trying to make any money off of this this is something just kind of like a fun collection but it does give you a clear picture of the type of merchants you guys are up against in game and what you guys should hope to be your goal in the future. Um, maybe you shouldn't have like, um, maybe you shouldn't be making collections as a, an investment type portion, but you know, of course you could have a fun collection like these guys. But of course, again, this is what it would look like if someone were to try and make money off of their collection. And finally guys, I wanted to show you some real life examples of what their flips would look like. And obviously, if you guys are looking at the price, these are 100% not their current price anymore. Uh, but of course, they could reach that price anytime in the future. But at the time of this video, these prices are um, much lower or much higher than they are in the video as opposed to what they are currently in game. So if you look at the far right, you have someone who has been flipping Elijah and Spirit Shields on a consistent basis and making a lot of money, um, several million, um, maybe on every single flip and doing that on a consistent basis. And then I said I was going to provide a, an example of a market manipulation, uh, but I wouldn't, I'm not sure if this is a manipulation per se. This is rather just kind of like a market control. And I'm sure many of you guys have heard of Wilson. He is by far the most famous merchant out there in terms of RuneScape. Um, I mean, this guy, this guy is really known for his crazy investments, and he became even more famous on Old School with his domination of Third Age items uh, when they came out. So, at one point in time, he started to um, he had an idea of trying to control all Third Age longswords 
So as you can see in the picture on the far left, um, he started buying and buying Third Age Long Swords until he had all of them. Uh, well, I wouldn't say all of them. Obviously, some people in game had them. But as you can tell, he got it to a point where it was hitting max cash stack and he continued buying them in the GE over and over again. So anytime they came in, he made sure he had them. And it reached a point where if anyone wanted a third agent longsword, they'd have to go to him in game off the GE and pay a much higher price than it was um, than it was a max cash deck. So at one point in time, I think he was selling them for over three billion. So as you can tell, if you if he was buying them at two billion and flipping them for three billion. That's a massive profit. <laughs> that's huge. Um, that's just that's that's literally giving you guys a real picture of the type of merchants these guys are and what they are truly capable of and what you should really hope for your goal to be in the future. And obviously, um, Third Age Long Swords and Elijah and Spirit Shields are not at this price anymore. So these are kind of like safe items I felt was showing in terms of this kind of stuff, but. You know, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. Um, be sure to comment down below as well in terms of what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. And be sure to subscribe to show your support. And until next time, next time guys, and good luck merching.